Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Radio Yes Cymru on your favourite podcast app and also on YouTube. And joining me today is another familiar face from the Yes Cymru family, Phil Griffiths, who's very active in Yes Cymru Method and also on the Central Committee. Phil, welcome to Radio Yes Cymru. Oh, dear Sean, thank you very much. Lovely and to be here. You're reminding me in our Welsh language podcast that you, I had spoken to you before. Sorry, Phil. Um, so many, so many different editions I forget who we've had in the past. Uh, it's the middle of August. I, I hope you're listening to it on your, yes, coming on your podcast, sun, sun bathing somewhere nice and warm or walking up Snowdon and something, uh, or maybe just pottering up in the back garden. Uh, but the weather's very pleasant here in Aberystwyth. We've had an active uh, last week here in Yes Cymru with the Eistedd Vod. We'll come to that in a minute. But I think the big news for me, Phil, is an exciting news is the Eddie Butler Scholarship. We all know the very sad um, news of the passing of Eddie Butler just a few months ago. Big, big shock for all of us. But we're so grateful working with the family that they've decided to set up a scholarship in his name. So, Phil, you can maybe give us a bit more information about that. Who can apply for it? What is it? Uh, and when it opens? Yeah, certainly. I'd love to. Um, OK, well, it's, um, we're sort of, it's sort of undergoing a sort of a soft launch at the moment. Uh, it's a scholarship of five hundred pounds, yep. uh, and so it's open to anyone in full time education uh, between the ages of sixteen and twenty one. Um, they so have to the, be in full time education. They, they would have to be in education rather yep. than the world of work, um, okay. and I'll explain why. Yeah, and good. remind me to to yeah. explain <laughs> why if I forget. Um, yeah, so it's uh, we, basically we you know in line and you know in celebration of you know um the 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 incredible eddie butler uh, and what he's done for the independence movement uh, for us here in wales um we wanted to create something that would help to generate and celebrate the next generation of public speakers um, so we thought that, you know, one way to do this would be to have an annual uh, scholarship um, where we um, sort of go into schools, colleges, universities uh, and appeal to young people um, who obviously are A, you know, uh, strong independence fans and B, uh, have a talent for yeah. public speaking. Um, so to take them to that next level then uh, and working alongside their, their teachers and their tutors and so on, um, this was why I mentioned full-time education, because obviously we're now in the age of artificial intelligence yeah. where uh, an unscrupulous um, you know, applicant could, with no effort whatsoever, you know, create a very, very good submission indeed. Um, so we would need their teacher or tutor to countersign their application to say, yes, you know, I'm happy that this is uh, the student's work. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it can, you know, we want it to be an open brief uh, so that it appeals to a, a wide spectrum of young people so that it draws on the talents that they've got and that they can bring to bear then when it comes to getting that independence message across, whether it's, you know, in a um, a debate in society, in a pub, or, you know, standing on the stage at one of our independence marches, you know, uh, looking out across a sea of thousands and, you know, what would you say in the five minutes that you've got there? Um, so we want to inspire people and really fire them up and get them, you know, thinking, get their thinking caps on now. Um, so the application's open October 1st, right. uh, open till January then, uh, and then we'll start sifting through then uh, following that. Yeah, because, I mean, Eddie's speech in Merthyr, which is on the Yes Company YouTube page, have a look at it, it's absolutely fantastic. I said, I said before, best mm -hmm. speech I've ever seen, uh, succinct interesting every word balanced and weighed and thought about mm. uh, brief to the point no waffling uh but engaging as well yes yeah, so i think it's a, a model uh speech uh of course eddie had decades of of learning his craft as a writer uh to get to that so standard not everyone can achieve that i mean it's so inspiring that yes company and his and eddie's family have worked together to create this uh, little scholarship and it's so such an important thing because 
you know, having the arguments for independence is so important for us all. So even for those of us who are too old to compete or who can't, whatever, seeing that then broadcast will be important because hopefully they'll give us all the, the arguments or more arguments for independence, which we can be using. And five minutes isn't a lot of, lot of time. You know, you can say a lot of things in five minutes. And you know, for most people, that's basically the discussion you can have in a pub or over a drink or something with a friend or someone's asking questions. So having those arguments laid out so people can almost memorise or remember bits of it is so important because if you think about it, the arguments against independence, a lot of them, like all arguments, are sort of automatic pilots. Aren't they? People mm-hmm. remember a couple of things, they then remember what they, they've been told. I know we all, we all do this. There's nothing to be, you know, this, this is a new revelation. But I think what we don't have independence until recently was people having those automatic pilots, if you like, arguments, mm-hmm. which they were familiar with, they've rehearsed, they've heard people say, which they know they don't sound stupid saying, and that's what we need to to have, so that people have those things like predictive texts hmm. or independence, you know, because basically we've had 700 years of having people having predictive texts text against, and yeah. you know, a lot of people have been brought in by it, and it, because it makes people sound more, maybe more intelligent than they are, or maybe they've thought about it more than they have, but essentially people are uh, regurgitating things they've heard a lot of times on the media. So we want to, to have our own arguments, weighed, intelligent, uh, humorous, uh, engaging, personable, uh, to to fight for our case for independence. So as I say, Phil, th- this will all be on social media. So for yes, can we get the you know, read the, lo- the daily, the weekly um, newsletter we send out? The opening on 1st of October, uh, closing in January, and then the winning entrant will be announced or will be taking part in the annual lecture. Was it, am well, I... the, yeah, just something else, sort of a separate and parallel event then is the uh, Ed Butler annual lecture. Yeah. Um, so, and as part of that then, um, the, the winner will be announced yeah. of the Ed Butler scholarship. Um, so they're sort of two separate things, but they come together. They sort of dovetail together for that um, announcement then, which will be made at the Eisted Vod um, right. on the Canantav. Um But uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, before we get to that point, we will create a short list um, of the, you know, the five or six best entrants. We'll work with them then to, you know, to generate a, a professional quality video of themselves delivering that speech. Um, so they've got that to take away anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and sometimes like with these uh, sort of reality um, TV shows, quite often, the, the, you know, the, the person who wins um, isn't necessarily the best one, you know, and you, you get the runner up then sometimes eclipses that person, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, you know, beyond the, the competition and, you know, they get their own recording contract and so on. But at least we'll have a situation where, you know, that short list, the finalists will all get that same treatment. So it'll be something that they can add to their CV. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the winner themselves, then um, all the details will be, you know, in the document that goes out to uh, any applicant who would like to uh, show interest in the the scholarship, but um, as part of their commitment, they you know they'll be expected to uh, give us a report at the end of that year then on how they've spent their money, how it's you know improved their learning, um, what op- opportunities it's opened up for them, um, as opposed to you know five hundred pounds worth of pot noodles, which. <laughs> Yeah. Doesn't look good on anyone. Something else we won't mention. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. So maybe they've used part of money to visit Ireland or something, or you know, yes. other yeah, 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 independence or Scotland, maybe or whatever. So I mean, that's a, yeah. So something which is a bit more uh, uh, engaging with independence than than yeah, pot noodle. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great idea. Keep an eye out for that. Follow the Ask Emily's social media. You'll, you'll get the details uh, and tell your friends about it or your indie curious mm-hmm. people. Brings us on brings us on nicely to um, working to develop uh, youth groups or a uh, young part of Yes Community, which is something I know the movement is also looking at. Um, I think Naomi uh, is responsible for this from the Central Committee, but maybe you can tell a bit more, because this is such an important thing. And I'm going to say, I mean, it's, it's 
peculiar thing with the independence movement is the support is strongest uh, the younger people are and I'm talking about 34 years old is young as well but I, I find that the most active people tend to be people of our generation Phil who are a bit older yeah, and yeah. this is quite peculiar because I know in the, the history of Welsh nationalism certainly the Welsh language movement it was very much the youth the, the students leading the, the charge in the 1960s and 70s I think this thought that was because of demographic change in that you know there are a few young people about now, um, so maybe that creates less of a cohort mm -hmm. or less of confidence of youth. I'm not sure it is, which we you don't have the baby boom generation, which we had 40, 50 years ago. Uh, but so it's surprising that you know we the support for the independence is almost normal uh, within many circles of young people, but actually the engagement is less than with the older generation. So yeah, maybe tell us what's happening here, Phil. Yeah, it's normal. I think that's the key word there. Eh? You know, in in Welsh we we say normalizio, don't we? You know, it's, it's it it has been normalized, and this is fantastic now. It's, it's you know, it's a very very recent phenomenon yeah. that um, you know independence. It it's not some pipe dream yeah. anymore. You know, some nationalist pipe dream, as it was so often called and dismissed as such. Um, but it's now something that's become a sort of mainstream discussion, yeah. which is absolutely fantastic. And the you know the the sort of demographic then showing the the higher levels for support then amongst the the younger generation is really really encouraging, uh, because the you know the older people they they do tend to be a little bit harder to persuade. Um, you know, they'd be set in their ways. It's very interesting. Um, one of the speakers at the Merthyr March, uh, Professor Ian Black from Scotland, yeah. um, political analyst and strategist, had a good chat with him uh, because he did a lot of work on the uh, 2014 uh, yeah. result and went back and spoke to people, you know, um, to find out um, how they voted. Well, to find out why they voted the way they voted yeah. but of course when you're asking these sort of questions you can't be upfront about yeah. what you want as the answer and what you yeah. so you know they would ask all sorts of questions and then as a final question would be oh and by the way did you vote remain yeah. you know uh yes or no in 2014. so uh and he said it was very 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 interesting because um basically you've got very very similar people and robin mcalpine as well you yes. know uh, said exactly the same the only difference uh, is confidence yeah. and that sort of whether they're risk averse or whether they're confident in life whether they're willing to take a risk so i think it's it's about getting people to take that tiny 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 leap of faith and think oh do you know what you know the status quo is rubbish. It it yeah. you really can't get much worse than this. Um, well, it could if we don't, you know, opt for independence. Yeah. So yes, I think working with um, the younger generation now get it because obviously it's you know it's, it's a major problem now that you know low numbers of turnout. Yeah, uh, you know, for uh, general elections, senate elections, and so yeah. on. It's it's something that we really need to tackle anyway. So I think getting in there, you know, with young people, um, engaging with them, getting them fired up and excited uh, about politics um, is is a brilliant way to go anyway. It's, you know, it can only be a good thing. So we've, you know, we're very lucky in Yes Cymru now that we've got someone who's great at that, Naomi, Naomi Hughes. Uh, so she's leading on the Yes Cymru Evanc. Um, so she's the person, if I can just give it a plug, so it's naomi at yes dot Cymru. Yeah. Um, and obviously there are very strict rules about, you know, political people going into schools and colleges, yeah, you know, it's strictly no go. But, you know, as a young person, you can contact her. That's absolutely yeah. fine. Um, so, yes, it, so that's really exciting, you know, the the idea that there will be um a wave or wave after wave of people coming after us now yeah. we're going to carry the baton of independence yeah exactly and it's good to see the move the movement just thinking so strategically 
yeah, about where it's going and where it needs to be going in the next few years. Um, I think the, the first years with us was so sort of just getting movement up on its feet and walking. That took a lot of effort. I think now we, we it is a, a proper move to settle the structures there. We can start thinking a bit more strategic, a bit more long term, uh, which maybe we did. We just couldn't until fairly recently. And then COVID came over. Came over. Uh, talking about the youth movement, I mean, I was talking to Geraint on the last podcast and uh, Geraint Thomas, not cyclist, Geraint uh, Panorama, as we call him, who is a photographer. Uh, and he was talking about Ken Headlife and Ivanet, which is a very nice uh, alliteration in Welsh, but um, the independence generation yeah. and at the East Edward, National East Edward, uh, last week up in Penllyn, uh, there were young bands uh, playing outside the Yes Company stand, uh, well, five days, uh, every day, well, six days, wasn't it, I think, so Monday until Saturday, yeah. which was great to see. And again, this is part of the Yes Company strategy of, you know, engaging with people. Because, you know, 50% plus, sorry, I'm going to switch my phone away, 50% of the population under 30, 34 and, and younger support independence. You know, this is actually phenomenal. You know, mm-hmm. that includes obviously people who have no beer or whatever, but that's true of all polls. Uh, but that's such a sea change. And um, I'm a particularly heartened to see, you know, people in, in, you're talking about people in their 30s, it's not just, just someone who's got nothing to lose, but people who actually work in their improper jobs, they may be, they're paying rent, they're buying, they're buying their first home, maybe have children. Uh, this is a very encouraging situation. So they're working with these people, making sure we know what they want and how we're to engage with people is so important. How, how did this tell about go again, uh, Phil? Oh, brilliant. Excellent. Really enjoyed myself. Um, I was staying on top of a mountain where, you know, uh, it, where, where you saw the body and oh, right, the Hollywood, Hollywood there. style. I was just over the top there, just beyond the ridge. Um, it was fine getting down because the, the campsite owners had very kindly put these little signs, you know, to guide the walkers through yeah. a few lanes and down through a couple of farm fields and you were there. But, of course, those signs don't work in reverse then when you need to go home in the dark. So two nights running, I got a little bit lost. Uh, so I'd like to give a bit of a shout out now to my uh, very, very good friend on the Monday night. who I was walking in the middle of nowhere in the darkness uh, and a car pulled up alongside. I wound the window down and said, Phil? I said, yes. Uh, and it was my good friend Liz McLean from Zoa. I said, uh, like to my left, do you want a lift? I said, oh, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, desperate, yeah. Uh, so, and I was miles from where I needed so to be. So Liz saved your life then, Phil? Oh, she did. She was my guardian angel that night. She was absolutely superb. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so great experience, as yeah. always. So, um, and engagement, you know, very, very positive engagement, high engagement, people coming into the stall to uh, sign up, to renew their membership, to grab stickers, badges, yeah. you know, help themselves to flyers and so on, and have chats as well. And so many conversations uh, about, the, you know, specifically the, the Bangor March now, which yeah. is on the horizon. Um, but then sort of working with the groups and, you know, as soon as you'd found out where the person's from, say, well, how active is your group in yeah. your area, you know, and w- what have you got coming up and so on, and how can we help? Yeah. So it was a, 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 an excellent opportunity then to sort of join those dots, meet people, and sort of hopefully, you know, inspire them to um, get active and be a little bit more active and doing stuff in their, in their communities. Yeah, and, and this is so important. I know we need, if you're in a local group or there isn't one, get one started. You don't have to do something every week. There's no need for that. Uh, but if there's something happening once every two months, that's fine. At the moment, there is no election. There is no referendum for independence. There's no actual campaign. What's the important thing now is getting the structures ready and getting people together, talking to each other, get the argument out. And you know, again, stuff to happen. I know in Abbotsford, we have a banner on bridges or banner on roundabouts this Saturday 19th. I know there's an event up in Vellinheli, which is a village between... Another one in Bangor, they've got a festival going on, their little festival they did last year, if I remember correctly, that's on Saturday 27th. So these kind of things are happening, and you know, they can be quite easy to organise. Um, we had a street store in Aberystwyth Street Town Centre about two or three weeks ago. Again, it's just important that people see without uh, talking to people. So the banners are quite easy. Nobody approaches you, nobody talks to you if you're a bit shy. But you know, doing something like a street store is, is, is great as well. 
Um, and this is all part of the movement of building the movement, movement of getting the message out, showing we're not embarrassed or in any way um, feel awkward about discussing independence with people. Yeah, so talking ab about that, I mean, we have got the march in Bangor, Phil. It's on Saturday, 23rd, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay. Bangor. As I said in the interview with a chat with the Geraint, Bangor is quite interesting. You know, you've got within about 10, 15 miles, you've got strong West speaking villages, it towns. Mm -hmm. you know, you've got very anglicized towns, like so maybe Sunday Dunch is the language. Uh, you've got some very affluent people and some very rich houses there. You've got the academic community, of course, with Bangor University, some very poor communities and people uh, with post-industrial in, uh, in, uh, villages in, in, around Bethesda, Dufferin and uh, So this really is a microcosm of Wales within a very small geographical footprint, really. You know, Angus, again, an important part uh, of, of the movement. I'm looking forward to Bangor. I know things are going well. They were saying that uh, there's good communications, obviously, with local authorities there. Uh, the march itself is looking good. Uh, we're waiting to hear who the speakers are. But you said uh, there's going to be stalls there. So, I mean, there'll be stalls from nationalist uh, movements, I guess, coming and other ones, I'm sure. But also short stalls just selling uh, stuff for people to eat or to buy as well. Am I right? Yes, that's right. So the indie market... Um, we'll have a range of stores in there. So we're encouraging people to get there early so yeah. that you've got time to browse and buy uh, before the march actually starts then at one o'clock. Yeah. Um, so, yes, it's. I think, uh, as you say, Sean, it's a sort of a microcosm of Wales in a way, isn't it, Bangor? I haven't been there for a, for a few years now, perhaps yeah. five or six years, but from what I've heard recently, um, you know, Bangor High Street then, you know, is... It's um, so many um, yeah. boarded up shops and so on. It's uh, uh, I think it's you know typical of so many other places in you know Wales, and it shows how desperately we need yeah. to take control of our own affairs, uh, yeah. do the right thing by our people. And the importance of circular economy is obviously very it's basically made in Bangor High Street. They just say it's um, and people travel over to to shop in. Uh, the big cities in London, in England or even to London now. Uh, so it'd be a big boost for the town itself, I think, as well, when people go yes. there. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. It's a gig in the evening as well in Ponto, which is the big art centre there. So stick around for that. So, you know, make a weekend of it. You know, if you haven't been in the north for a while, it'd be lovely to go there. A bit sunny is absolutely spe spectacular. The, the backdrop with the uh, snow door near Errari behind uh, Bangor is absolutely amazing. Uh, and the Menai Strait is very beautiful. I don't think people realise how beautiful it is. It is up there. Uh, so make an effort. It's going to be a stalking event, I think. And I'm when I heard that Bangor was a chosen place, I thought maybe it's a funny venue. I, th I thought maybe somewhere like Clandidno would be better. But I think Bangor actually is a microcosm of Wales. There's yeah. there's so many. The Wales is basically within that twenty square miles uh, of Bangor. So I mean, it is a very sensible and good place, an important place to go to. Um, I've just remembered the name of the group. Uh, Gellert was in the group I filmed at the ah. East Edward. So I put some stuff up with the Amber Street, the Yes Company Facebook and Twitter of uh, Gellert, who is a young group from Pembrokeshire who performed a side stand. And there's a clip of David Iwan singing uh, the Welsh version of This Land is My Land, uh, the, the famous Woody Guthrie song. So hop over to the Facebook of Yes Company Amber Street. I think Yes Company Century. Uh, shared them as well, just have a feeling of how the East Edward uh, went. I feel I think I think we've covered a lot of, of ground there. I mean, mm. absolutely fantastic news with Eddie Butler. It's such a such a well lost to Wales, lost the family, lost the national movement that he passed away. But having this scholarship, which is I think is a very uh, tactile and sense sensible way of using that money and his memory to produce hopefully. Uh, speeches which we can use and and uh, the public can use and see so important. The Stelvard went very well. It's very lively. Understand when I was over there, great to have the connect like Danny Bunyan, the gen indie generation bands performing outside. Oh, we forgot to mention the Yes Samba. Oh, how could we yes. forget? So yeah, this is again something funky, something in the Yes Company family. Tell wow. us all about it, Phil Griffiths. Well, the sound of indie pen drums. <laughs> oh, put it away, Phil. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Right, yes. For for the the, the past few years now, you know, we're helping to organise the, the marches and so on. Whenever we've gone to samba bands and said, oh, would you like to take part? They're initially, oh, yes, brilliant. And then once it sort of filters down to the members, some are like, oh, yeah, yes, Cymru, and others are yeah. like, oh, I don't know, it's yeah, a bit understandable. political for us. So, so um, to get around this, we thought, well, why don't we have our own sort of off-the-shelf Yes Cymru Samba band? Here's uh, so what we prepared then, earlier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pop, pop it in the mic. It's a ready-made samba band, Phil, to coin a phrase. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a march-ready samba band. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, so it's going to be led by um, uh, Rhys Thomas of Tarian Drums, Ponteclean. Yes, yeah. Ponteclean. Uh, so he's very kindly volunteered his time and his uh, expertise and so on to set this up. Uh, and to set um, groups up then around Wales, which will be sort of self-sufficient following his initial sort of tuition period with them. Uh, and then depending on where the marches are, you know, groups in those areas will be pulled in or they can come from further afield. But, you know, whatever the formula, we will have, you know, our very own samba band that we can call upon to, you know, to take yeah. part in the marches. And it'll That's be great. made up, you know. We've, you know, we launched it through the newsletter about three weeks ago. I think we've already had about eight or nine people uh, get in touch and say, "Yeah." So do you need to, to be a samba expert to join, or can you be a novice? Yeah. You can be a complete novice. So tuition is all part of it oh, as well, fantastic. and it's a social thing as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Any of these sort of group um, events where you're learning a new skill. Uh, it's brilliant. So yeah, so it's uh, it's open to anyone of all abilities. Um, so we'll we'll hope to hopefully see, yes, Camry Samba have its first outing now in in Bangor. Yeah. Um, so that'll be a brilliant shop window for them. Yeah. Uh, and an opportunity to hand out the the flyers, the yes, Camry Samba yes. flyers as well. To and this is important because I know a lot of fly, um flyers were distributed thousands around Swansea. We did that same in Merthyr. So the March in Carnarvon, and this is so important, I think, and it's a good way for people to get to know the local branches. So if you live in the Bangor area, please get in touch. You know, if you can just spend an hour, it's yeah. great. Stick, stick a podcast in here. Think of it as some exercise. It's a chat to see people. Um, mm. You very rarely get people actually engaging with you politically, so if they're a bit afraid of canvassing, it's not the same as canvassing. Um, I quite enjoy it. I just think of it as mm. exercise. But it's so important for it, because, I mean, yeah. Not everyone's social media, not everyone certainly is following independent social media. So, but if they get a leaflet, you know, yeah. whoever they are, whatever the views are, it's very democratic. They get that in their hand. And, you know, yeah, we all know only about 2% of engagement actually happens with this type of thing. But you never know who that 2% is. And the rest of the people actually do get the information so they know that independence is on the march, literally. Mm -hmm. They know yes. what's happening. They can't ignore it. For independence opponents, it makes them a bit scared and know that we are organising. We're not just a bunch of people, of people online. That's important. Uh, for our supporters, even if they don't make it to the march, they're, they're glad to see something's happening. That's important in terms of getting you know, support. And it makes sure it makes sure that people can't ignore the independence question. Exactly. And if we start discussing independence, which has happened last few years, mm. we win. Mm. You know, the biggest threat to independence is people not discussing independence. Yes. Yeah. So thinking, exactly. oh, we're discussing if not doesn't work, people. You know, discussing depends actually works. This is how all political movements win mm -hmm. by making it a topic of discussion, uh, even if some people don't want it to be a topic of in, of discussion. So never apologize for supporting independence. Never come out with something. Oh, we don't want it quite yet. We want to sort something else out first. No, that's the mm -hmm. wrong answer. And mm -hmm. the, the answer which implies you're not too sure or you're shifty or you're afraid you want independence now because we want to sort out the problems now mm -hmm. uh, will it happen today no not even tomorrow but certainly we need to be discussing that and so never apologize for it and so these leaflets so please help out the Bangor people to get mm -hmm. these out in the towns and villages around Bangor because it's so so important make sure everyone knows about the, the march and they can't ignore that so that, that's what happens, if you have, I presume, these things are getting... Definitely. In, in the weeks leading up to the march now, we'll be liaising with the um, 
uh, with the uh, members in Bangor and targeting certain areas then. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a social activity, you know, it's a social event. You get to meet um, other members yeah. and you get to engage with the communities. And like you say, Sean, it's that drip, drip effect then. Yeah. You know, you're getting the brand out there. It's landing on people's doormats. So it's, you know, it's something that people can't ignore and you know and at some point they're going to start thinking so what is this yes can we think what is it all about oh well i've got two minutes and i'll, I'll read yeah. it you know? and yeah. you know interestingly now with the banners on bridges now uh recently we've um started a spreadsheet where we're recording uh the response levels uh, right. you know, the, yeah the number of positives and the number of negatives for the yeah. you know the hour that we're there so it's all fed back in. And, it, you know, it's great to see you're looking at sort of 95% plus positives, um, you know, but that, that less than 5%, then what's good about that is they, they've got an opinion, you know, rather than looking up at the bridge and again, you yeah. know, what yeah. the heck yeah. is all that about? You know, so even if they've got a negative opinion, the fact that there are so few of them, yeah, is hugely encouraging. So, you know, if there's banners on bridges going on in your area and you haven't yet been to one of those, I tell you what, it's, it's fantastic. Be on yeah. a bridge with we, flags, we would... cars beeping and waving and yeah. cheering you and saying, yes, yo, yeah. Yeah, yes, Cymru, we really believe in what you're doing. You know, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, we had one in our trip last Saturday. The intention was to uh, give people traveling up to East Edward or whatever, a bit of a boost of it, and it just poured down. Mm -hmm. I was talking to people who did it in Bow Street, which is a village just north, north of that, but they had a little on when the rain had stopped, and they had a good response. So people are positive. I think there's an element, I mean, with people who are, some people who don't react at all are against, so that's, you know, so, you know, there's no point kidding ourselves. But, I mean, you do have very good reaction, and people appreciate, I think, that people are making a stand. Yeah, I, yeah. If we're not making a case for Welsh nationalism, then the danger is, and that's happened in the past, is that people will make a case for British nationalism. Mm. So this idea is you can avoid nationalism is, is for the fairies. There will always be some kind of a national discussion or framework to how people think. Um, mm. So if they're not thinking in a Welsh frame of mind or framework, then they're thinking in a British frame of mind or framework. In that case, the Wales first law doesn't get a C in because mm. we're not significant. And secondly, as we have seen and do see, it can be quite dark as well. So I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we are making. I think we are. We need to challenge, channel people's frustration and 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 happiness. And there is reason for that because wages are falling or not increasing fast enough. You know, people are saying that basically the UK economy is Mississippi or Missouri, uh, but with some very rich people as well. So I mean, that's, that's the kind of situation the state is in. So if we're yeah. not challenging that uh, and happiness, then other people are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And they're going to use divide and conquer and getting people to be angry with even people who are worse off than them. And yeah. that's what we've seen happening uh, uh, in history and in British state in the past. Uh, Phil Griffiths from Yes Committee, Mr. Tidville, and also the Central Committee. Thanks a lot for making time to speak to Radio Yes Committee this evening. Uh, please follow Radio Yes Committee on Twitter, Facebook on your favourite app, share with your friends, like on the on the, 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 the app as well, that's important for boosting us. We're also on uh, YouTube as well, if you want to watch Phil and me talking. Uh, but until the next time, from Radio S Company, from me, Sean Jobbins, and from Phil Griffiths, uh, take care of yourself, and remember, every step is a step towards independence. Bo-boil. Diolch. Bo-boil. Ah.